Hello and welcome back to another Django Admin series tutorial. So previously we looked at registering models to the admin site. That process took us through registering a model and then looking at how we can then register models, create objects so we can create customizations. So if that's something that you need to know, then please head back to the previous tutorial. In this tutorial, we're gonna start looking at customizations. So we're gonna specifically look at the model admin options, the fields, so here we're going to create some or learn how to select fields uh, to display in the form. And then we have a look at then customizing that further. So looking at field sets, so grouping fields together. We'll look at some of the different options that are available. So descriptions, how you could bring in classes, for example. And then we can go through some different options to display different help text in the form. And then finally, I'll take you through a process or I'll give you a baseline so that you can maybe start building a custom form. So just to quickly explain what it is that we're doing here. In our blog, we have models. So this is a post model here. So we've category title excerpt. These are all the fields in this model. Obviously, I've gone ahead and registered this to the admin so that now when we go into the admin area, we have the posts here. So we can now add some items to this post table. So let's go to add. And now you can see all these fields. So we have this um, bar on the left hand side. Uh, so these are all the fields that correspond to all the fields in our model. So what we're doing in this tutorial is just customizing the look of this. So we can remove items here, we can add items, we can categorize and organize these items in different ways that might suit your project. So that's the focus of this tutorial. So the first thing you're going to notice is that the order that we place the items in our model here, so category, title, excerpt, slug, publish, author, etc., that's going to be the same order that you see here in the admin area. So of course, that's the first change that you might want to make if you want to just reorder this list. So what we learned from previous tutorials, that if we wanted to provide some customization within our forms, we needed to create a new class and extend from the uh, model admin. So here's where we're going to define uh, some of the field properties or some of the customizations for the fields. So what we saw from the previous tutorial is that we defined the fields here and then we can just select what fields from the model that we want to output. So for example, maybe just the title and the author. So this gave us control in terms of what is displayed in the form. So when we go back and refresh, we can see we only have now two options. So that was a simple example of choosing fields. Okay, so we can also kind of group fields uh, from the existing fields that we have. So what we can do uh, is, for example, let's just add, in addition to this, the, the slug. And then just let's just group these together. So if we group in the parentheses here, um, that will mean that these items will now be grouped. That will mean these items will now be grouped. So you can see what happens here. What this grouping really refers to is the fact that they're going to be placed where possible on the same line. So obviously, as your page scales down, it will fall below, um, but where possible. So for example, if you have some smaller inputs, you can put them across in a nice row. So what we also have available is field sets. So here we can create different sections within our form. So now we can take our fields. Let's turn this into field sets and let's go ahead and just make some parentheses. Okay, so now we've got our field sets. So essentially we're building sections now within our form. So we can go ahead and build a a new section. So let's um, first of all start with um, the name of the section. So let's just call this the main section or let's just call this section one. Okay, so that's going to be the name of the section of the title bar and then we're going to need a comma and now let's just define some of the fields that we want to include. So the same type of process here, we're just going to now define the fields that we want to use within this section. So let's just go for title 
and author. Okay, so let's take a look at what this looks like. We're going to need a comma there. So let's take a look. We refresh. And there we go. So now we have section one. So what we can do if we want to is just uh, copy this and make a new section. Let's go to section two. And we're just going to put in here the example, the slug. And you can now see we have section two. So that's just a simple way of uh, creating sections within your form. We do have some other options that are available here. Uh, one of them being description. So we've got fields. So let's go ahead and also now include description. So you'll see what this is uh, once we've added this on. So if we're going to build a description in actual fact, it probably get a little bit messy. If we start writing a long description here, uh, this field set is going to look a bit untidy. So let's just import some text in. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, let's call text, for example. Um, so let's go ahead and just build some text up here. So now we can bring in some text from a variable here called text. So text equals uh, some text that we can include. Okay, so what that's going to give you it is, is a, a description for the field set. So if we have a look at this now and refresh, some text that we can include. So we can add some introductory text to each section of your form. Okay, so next up we have classes. So what we can do is we can attach classes to different sections. Now there are some pre-baked in classes. So let's just go ahead for that first. We'll have a look at classes and kind of those uh, more extreme customizations in a later tutorial. So let's go ahead and just have a look at uh, collapse. So this is going to provide a collapsible area. Uh, so just be careful with the syntax here. So you can see the commas that I'm utilizing. Uh, so if I refresh, you can see we've now got this uh, collapsible section here in the form. If you take a look at the manual, there are some other uh, classes that we can add, for example, wide. But there's nothing really too exciting here that potentially you'd want to, to utilize. So those are some small customizations we can perform with a form. So let's have a look at help text, which is essentially just a text that we can add underneath each field here. So to provide the user a little bit of information before they input something into the field. So we can see here we've got the section text. So there's a number of ways of uh, getting the text to appear under the different fields. Uh, one of them is simply by just going into your model and just adding the help text within the model. So let's just have a look at the title here. So we're just going to need the help underscore text equals and then just add some text. So this this is a title, so that's just help text, and that's going to be picked up automatically by the admin area. So we can see now it says this is the title. Of course, there's times where that just isn't enough and you want to build your own custom form. So I'll just take you through the kind of baseline to set out how you might create a custom form within the admin page. So we're going to build a form, so let's go ahead and actually then import from Django, uh, let's import forms so we can build some forms. So we're going to build a new class. So let's just uh, call that, for example, uh, this is going to be the post form, so post form. And then we can just go ahead and bring in forms and then just extend to um, model form. There we go. Okay, so now we need to do some overriding. So let's just do uh, let's use the init and then self. So we're going to take in self, and then we're going to take in um, any of the args and quarks. So if you're not too sure what these are, there there's a great tutorial that I have in this tu in this channel describing and giving an explanation of what args and quarks are. 
Okay, so we bring all that in. So now we can go ahead and override. So we use super uh, and then we've got a form. So we're going to take our form, which is going to be the post form and self, anything else. And let's go ahead and take in the args and quarks. Okay, so now we've got the override in place, we can now just simply define what it is we want in our form. So in this case, it's going to be self fields. So we're going to define what fields we want to utilize. We then simply just select the, the field that we want to utilize. And then we can, for example, add the help test. So we can override the help desk, the help test text, sorry. Um, equals new help and yeah, new help text. There we go. Okay, so that's going to create um, a new form. So we might want to add in some uh, meta at this point um, where we just describe the model. So it's going to be the post model. So obviously we've imported that in up the top here. And what we can also do is now, oh, let's just uh, leave it like that for now. Um, so let's go ahead and now we need to actually bring this in. So we're going to need new class here. So which is going to be the post form. Let's just call this post form admin. Okay, so that's just uh, extend as per normal from admin and then model admin. And then we're then going to bring in our form, which is called uh, post form, of course, form. So now we have our post form in place. So obviously now we need to just register this. So site.register. And then we're going to bring in the, the model as per normal. And then obviously what we just created, which is the uh, the post form admin. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now we have everything in place. Uh, it looks like we've got a an error here because that should be model equals post. And then what we're also going to do is just exclude. Let's just put that in place. So let's just exclude. So we're not going to exclude anything yet. Um, let's just give that a go. I'm going to need a comma there. Okay, so it looks like it's working okay now. We have everything in place. So let's go back into our form and refresh. And you can see that we're getting an error. So looking at the code, I've just got uh, missing S up here. Looks like that might be the problem. So let's go back, fresh, and there we go. So you can see it's picked up everything um, within our model and we've got everything in place. You can see the new help desk, help text, uh, new help text. So yeah, now we've got the option of, for example, excluding things. So let's just uh, exclude this slug. There we go. So now that's the slug has disappeared. So you can start to see how potentially you can now build or override an existing form um, and customize it as you wish. Of course, we could do a lot more here. The idea is just to give you kind of a baseline, just to show that it is possible to create your own forms. We will later in this series be editing the admin area quite considerably, and that will come more into play once we start doing that. So for now, I think that we've uh, set out some of the basics here, selecting fields, looking at field sets so you can start to organize your admin area, thinking about help desk, uh, help text, sorry, and then building a custom form. So up next, we'll have a look at filters, how to create some filters so we can start thinking about filtering our, our posts. So we'll create some posts and then we want to potentially look for items within our posts. Uh, so we'll create some filters so that we can filter out some of the different posts that we might want to filter or search for, of course. Thank you very much for listening and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial. 
And just a final point, just to let you know about the membership. So if you wanted to support the channel further, please go ahead and become a member. So there's three different options available for membership. Um, and this is something that you can roll on and roll off. It's not something that is set over a certain amount of time. So if you want to become a member just for a month, you can do. So if you do want to go ahead and support the channel, please consider joining the channel as a member. Again, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next tutorial.